Jump starting a motorcycle operates on many of the same principles that you use to jump start a car. However, there are a couple of important distinctions um, that you all should know. First off, the donating vehicle, the vehicle with the good battery, whether it be another motorcycle or um, a car or a truck, uh, should always be off. This is in contrast to when you're jump starting a car, you know, and they say that you should have the donating vehicle running. Um, but, uh, Motorcycles don't really have the, the robust electrical system that vehicles do that can handle the kind of amperage or the amps that come out of the, um, the alternator. So it is possible that you could fry some wires if your car is running and if the motorcycle that is donating the electricity is running, um, that could also be damaged if it is running. You just want straight battery action. So we have these coming from my truck. Um, you just hook them up to the battery. Like so. And you're good to go. You start your bike. Good to go. Um, a lot of people will also uh, sort of religiously, instead of ground out to the battery, a little ground out to the frame of the bike. Um, you know, something about risks of explosions or whatever. Uh, that's also acceptable. I'll do it either way. Um, sometimes you'll have a motorcycle where uh, you can't really get to the battery. It's like, you know, the battery is way under there and the terminals aren't rarely available. So something you can do is ground onto the frame just like this one is and then find the hot side of the starter solenoid. Pretty much every starter solenoid has these two large leads right here. One leads to the starter motor and one leads to directly to the battery. So this uh, starter solenoid is typically right you know, out there, right on this side, like here. So what you can do is you can put your um, your um, hot side to your of your donating uh, leads right here to this side, and um, then you know start your bike normally like this. Uh, it's really important to um, make sure that your bike is in neutral when you do this because if you accidentally put it on the starter motor side, your starter motor is going to turn over. And um, if you're in first gear, then uh, you know your bike will take off. So um, before you do this you know, starter solenoid jump trick, um, just be sure that your, uh, your, um, your bike's in neutral. So that was how to jump start your bike. Now this is how to bump start your bike. Um, in order to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to turn the ignition on, make sure the uh, kill switch is off or whatever, you know, so it's, it's in its run position. Pull out the choke, make sure the gas is on, make sure everything, all the conditions, you know, for the bike to run are on. Um, we're going to put the bike in second gear, sometimes third gear is even easier. Um, and then get the bike going down a hill. Um, you know, and once it gets up to maybe 8 or 10 miles an hour, um, just pop the clutch out all the way. Remember, we're, we're just coasting down the hill with the clutch in. Just pop the clutch out all the, all the way, and um, the bike should just sort of turn on. And be careful because you're going to rock it forward, you know, um, so don't dump the bike or anything. But um, that's, you know, a good way to start the bike, uh, you know, like... If your battery went dead, if you let the lights on or something, or if your battery connections wiggle loose, um, you know, while you're out on the road. Alternatively, if you don't have a hill, you can um, get uh, get a couple of friends to push you, and once you get up speed, then you just pop the clutch, and that's how you can do it on a flat surface. Also, if you really know your bike and you know the uh, the balance of your bike, um, you can do it all by yourself. Just you know, start off on the side get uh, you know as fast as you can go running pushing the bike and then you hop on the bike as soon as um, you hop on the bike you're gonna swing your uh, your right leg over 
Um, and as soon as your butt hits the seat, that's when you let go of the clutch. And that way, the downward force of your butt hitting the seat is going to put downward force on the rear wheel and so you don't skid, skid, skid. Uh, so this takes a little bit of practice, but I've seen guys do this on um, like GL 1800s. You know, I've seen guys do this on really big bikes. Um, so uh, now I'm going to demonstrate it for you. Let's do it.